everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that I have been saying that I was gonna film for two million years, but we're finally here. We have arrived at the destination. I am gonna talk about what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a full phase of drugstore makeup that is just good, like actually good drugstore makeup. Not dupes, not good for the price, not comparing it to high end. These are good products that hold their own. They don't need to be compared to anything else. They don't need to be justified because of the price. They're just really great products that also happen to be kind of affordable. And I made an effort to do this kind of a one product from each brand, well, not each brand, but like I, t I tried to make an effort to not choose two products from the same brand. And let me tell you, this was hard, not because I couldn't find good affordable makeup, the opposite. I have so much awesome drugstore affordable makeup in my collection. Things that are great, not because they're affordable, not because they're a dupe, blah, 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 blah. They're just great products. So if you would like to see a part two, let me know down in the comments because I definitely have things that I could be showing you. And I wanted to like really talk about like the best of the best. <laughs> I'm making a mess. And I'm gonna start with the e.l.f. Gripping Primer. This primer is so good. This happens to be the one with niacinamide. I think that both the original one that's like a light turquoise and this one with niacinamide, I usually do one pump. I think they behave similarly on the skin. So if your skin loves niacinamide, why not pick the one with niacinamide? But honestly, they're the same. <laughs> One has niacinamide. This is a great gripping primer. It really is, like, I don't know. It's really grippy, and I usually use it where my foundation or makeup has a tendency of, like, trying to slip out of frame, which is in my T-zone. So I just use it here, and then I just tap the excess around the rest of my face and I let this sit. With the gripping primer, something that I have noticed is that I've, if I let it set for around five minutes, it will behave the absolute best. And then when I put my makeup on top of it, I try to like bounce with a beauty blender and not like just drag or swipe. Try to see this as like, how would you blend on top of a sticky surface? You wouldn't try to drag, you would just pat it to make sure that like it's like sticking down to this stickiness. How many times have I said sticky? Do not take a shot, you will be blackout drunk. I have been raving about this foundation as of late. This is the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Makeup for Combination Oily Skin. So it's the orange text. I think they have a normal one and then they have one for like dry skin as well. I have like combo skin. I get very oily in my T-zone and then around my outer perimeter of my face, I'm more of a like normal skin. First of all, this is a great foundation. I'm recommending this for a reason. And even though I haven't had this for that long in my collection, it definitely is already pretty well used. It's like a gel-like foundation that's hint to light for me in the summer, but we'll make it work. I have the shade, a secret, hold, 240. And I probably should get this in a shade darker, but we'll bronze up a little bit. This is a medium coverage gel-like foundation that you can see it's effortless on the skin. I don't want to say like it blends in like nothing because it definitely covers, but it just doesn't look cakey or heavy on the skin. And I think it's because it has that almost gel-like consistency. And this one holds up like nothing. Literally, you do not need to babysit this. There is a bunch of foundations that I really love, like affordable and high-end, and some of them I love with a little asterisk. Some of them I love, but I have to babysit them. Like, I have to make sure that they look good throughout the day. Like, it's not happening on its own. I have to blot it, I have to powder it, blah, 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 blah. This one, let me use a little bit more on my chin. This one, I don't need to do anything, which is what I need. Is that like a little breakout? It's very unlike me. Not sure how I feel about that. But yeah, I just love how this foundation looks. The only thing that I don't love about this foundation is that I have it in a shade that's 
too light for me now in the summer, but that's easy to fix. And honestly, my friend uh, Ali Dawson recommended this to me and this is a great recommendation. She has more oily skin than me. I think that she has like an entirely oily skin and I am more like only oily in the T-zone, but damn, this foundation is so good. Not good for the price. This is great. If this had been, like if this formula had been released by a high-end brand, nobody would be saying, eh, this is not a good like foundation. It feels cheap because it doesn't. This is one of my most used concealers in my collection. I feel like I should run out of this one soon. This is the Maybelline uh, Superstay uh, concealer. I have mine in, again, all of this is a secret, 15. Wow, that's very descriptive, 15. That's what we have. And this one comes with a little paddle thing and it's very thin. And because it is thin, it doesn't settle in my fine lines. And this almost is self-setting. Like, even if I don't set this with powder, it doesn't crease too much. Which, honestly, it's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal because I have a lot of fine lines under and around my eyes. I am 39 and let me tell you, if you get really close to my under eyes, we definitely can tell. We all can see that. Like, it's obvious. So I really feel like this concealer, it says to have like a full coverage. Uh, let's agree to disagree, Maybelline. I think this is a solid medium coverage, but it is very light. There is something though in the formula that when I hold the paddle up to my eye, it almost feels not irritating, but like I can feel like there's something in there, but I don't feel it like when I blend the concealer out and I definitely don't feel it throughout the day, but it looks smooth, thin, effortless, and like I said, nice medium coverage, and it's just one of my favorite concealers in my collection. And when I went on my Europe trip, two and a half week, this was the only concealer I brought. I didn't bring any other concealers because like, this is great. Why would I need anything else? This powder has, <laughs> it's been through a lot. Like you can see it's actual confetti and it's literally falling out. This is the NYX uh, finishing powder, the HD finishing powder in banana. This one is quite literally on its last leg. Um, we are going to do the best we can with this. It probably, <laughs> probably needs to be replaced. It has a little bit of a yellow undertone. It also comes in I think a deeper one and then a translucent lighter one that I know that my uh, my bestie uses because she is more like fair in her skin. But I think that this powder is effortless. It brings a little bit of color to the skin. It sets everything down and it just makes everything look smooth and matte but not dry. Even when I was living in Sweden because I am from Sweden and right now I'm living in Texas. Even when I was living in Sweden, I loved this powder when I had more normal skin and not combo. I think it looks great. Please don't tell me otherwise. <laughs> this one I bought out of a recommendation from Samantha March. This is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear bronzer in, all of these are, can, can we just agree on though that finding the shade on drugstore products sometimes is a mission on itself like I am on a mission because sometimes it's like on the sticker that you take off and it's like what was the reason I think this one is like light medium or something light medium oh my god it is this one this you see this super small here I'm too old to be having uh, small ones like this this one is great like <laughs> it is a matte bronzer it is so silky and so blendable. It doesn't tug to your foundation, even if you don't set your entire face with powder, which if I'm using a really good foundation that doesn't need that, I won't set my outer perimeter with like powder because I don't need it. It's only the T-zone, but I feel like this one blends effortlessly, even if you haven't set your entire face. And as you can see, the gradient that this cr creates beautiful. You can build on this one. It is sheer but buildable and the undertone is just such a believable bronze. I can't lie, 
this is a really good bronzer formula and it comes in so many shades as well which is honestly quite incredible and this is one of the few things that I actually bought in the drugstore because usually I order my makeup from either uh, Ulta or I'll order it online from somewhere else or sometimes I'll like get it at Target but I think I actually got this at a drugstore but I gotta say that the drugstore section at like Target it's pretty poppin', at least it's my target. Okay, so I did my brows. Speaking of brow products, I should probably have showed you how I use this, but I'm sure there's some kind of a brow tutorial on my channel. I'm still doing pretty much the same thing the last year and a half-ish, two years. These are the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pens. These are the kind of brow pens that have a little like brush tip applicator and you can draw in hairs. You can see that I've drawn in some hairs here where some are missing, which is pretty much all over the place here. I do have kind of sparse brows, even though my brow hairs are pretty long. These are great. These are not great for the price. These are not like, I don't want to call it like they're better than high end, but they are better than high end. It's not that like high end is what we're trying to achieve. It's like, these are just a great product and no other brand, regardless of price range, has been able to create this good of a product and this good of a like a brush tip applicator with this good of a color range as well because they have a lot of colors to choose from i uh, brought out some of these that i've been really really loving these are the cream highlighter and the cream blush from makeup revolution this is the one in peach let's do a little on this side and a little on this side i think that this product is just a great product Am I gonna use a brush or am I gonna use a sponge? I think I'm gonna use a sponge. It's not like, oh, it's a Charlotte Tilbury dupe because not everything that comes in like a poofy packaging is a Charlotte Tilbury dupe. It's just a really good shimmery blush formula that looks incredible and I really recommend it. I think it's beautiful. And they also have this like highlighter that looks like this. So let's do a little bit of this one as well. I will put which colors I'm having down below in case you're interested. I bought these in a trio, but I do think that you can get these uh, separately as well. I just think that this is a great product. Just getting a little bit of extra glow. Did I get it in my brows? perhaps. So if you were looking for a nice uh, cream product and you didn't want to spend a lot of money, I would definitely recommend these. And again, I was really trying to make an effort to talk about like different brands and this is Makeup Revolution or this is like Revolution Pro, but like all of these Makeup Revolution brands, like they are what they are, honestly. But I really think that that is such a nice product and Makeup Revolution does have some other good products as well. So again, if you would like me to do this again, let me know. I do have some eyeshadows from ColourPop. Honestly, this one that they released that's available at Target, this is the Blue Velvet. This is such a good blue eyeshadow palette. And I truly think that if you were wanting to try some blue, or if you were wanting to dig in, like dive into some colorful eyeshadows, I definitely think that ColourPop, and also let's be honest, Juvia's Place, has some really, really great options where you don't have to spend a lot of money, but still get a really good formula. This is a great palette and I'm so happy we're going to be using it again. I also have some Super Shock shadows here. I'll use one of these as well. Let me actually find something for my lips first though. I didn't bring something out. Am I going to have to like brand repeat? We'll see. Okay, I digged out the Juvia Slay's lip liner. This one is in Sweet Nothing. These are really good. They come in a bunch of colors as well. I really hope they would come out with even more colors because I think they're so good. Like a really great like lip liner formula. This is also really great. I haven't used this for a bit, but damn, this is a really good lip uh, gloss formula. This is the This Is Milky Gloss in Milk and Honey. And they smell like what they're called. So this one smells like Milk and Honey. It smells so nice. I also have this one in... The mango one, ugh, smells so good, it's orange. And I have the one in the mint chocolate chip, I think. Also, super pretty. I love a milky lip gloss, and I think that this looks incredible. It's such a balmy, watery, comfortable, non-sticky formula that 
Tastes a little sweet, smells amazing, looks beautiful. I really like these. I almost forgot about it, but this is a great one. This is a great one from NYX. I think NYX makes really good lip formulas. I think they've had a lot of really good lip things going on throughout the years. This is the Milani eyeshadow primer. Again, this is the only primer that I brought to Europe. No regrets. This is ugh, truly a really good eye primer. It has, as you can see, a little bit of a tint, but it doesn't cover entirely. But this one, it makes your eyeshadow pop. But it's not too sticky, but it's also not too silky. It's not like the, you know, the milk makeup, the one that they call the grip primer that was actually more of a slip primer. I feel like this one has a little bit of a grip, but still not to the point where it's hard to blend on top. And it really keeps my eyeshadow from not fading and not creasing. And I think that this is a great eye primer, not for the price, just a great eye primer. So let's dive into the blue velvet then. And I am going to be using, I have, uh, I think that this is from their, they have a lavender collection coming at lately. I don't know if I want to do this one, the silvery lavender or the more purple one. I might do the lighter one, but we'll see in a bit. But I want to do like a blue crease because I, this palette. I love this palette. Maybe I'll do something that's a little bit more muted, the Lagoon one, and then just do the At Midnight and try because I have done a look with this one before. I did a full video basically. What was the video about? Oh, it was like Colourpop at Target. So it was all about like Colourpop at Target. So I'm doing that at midnight. That was the entire premise of the video. And I used this palette and I was blown away. It truly is such a good a palette and I'm just picking up a little and just dotting it on. If you are working with blue eyeshadows or with eyeshadows that can be a little trickier to work with, brights, pastels, neons, blues, don't be swiveling and swiping with like a super fluffy brush. Mistakes will be made. Use a more dense brush and just plop it where you want and then blend afterwards. And if you want the look to be dramatic, starting with the darkest shadow can be a really good idea. I think that this is a shape that I am okay with, right? <laughs> Asking you like you're gonna answer me back. I'm gonna switch to a slightly bigger brush if I can find one. And I'm gonna do the Lagoon, which is this one here. You can see it's not as bright as this one. It's like a little bit more muted. And this is an EO2. This is from my own brand, Singe Beauty. We have this brush set. And I'm gonna plop this one next to it. Again, you can see I'm not swiveling and swiping, no big motions. I know I see a lot of people do like this and do like, and, Again, if, if you feel very confident in your skills or very confident in the formula, sure. But I like to be a little bit more cautious with where I put a blue eyeshadow. And I'm blending a little bit on the edge here with this fluffier brush and then just putting this blue next to it. Okay, so before I do any of the shimmer, shimmery shim, shimmer, 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 I'm gonna do I think this one, the Forever Mood. And I'm gonna use my Cinch EO4, which I love using in this area of my eyes. I'm just gonna pop it in the crease. Oh, so pretty. And again, you can see I am patting and I'm popping this in the inner part of my crease and I'm gonna blend all the way up towards here, or my like pat and blend, I guess. And I'm also gonna put this in the inner corner. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What's not to love? Okay, let's open this one that is called, oh, Angelic. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Again, I think that overall, the Super Shock shadows from ColourPop are great. They're a really great, putty like cream to powder uh, formula and look at how like blinding this like silvery lavender is. I don't know if I'm gonna spray it. 
uh, or if I'm just gonna yeah, I think I'm gonna spray it because m best result you will get with these if you use a finger. But my nails are so long right now, they're so grown out that there's like, I am gonna poke myself if I do that, so I can't do that. But I'm just gonna put some of this in the middle. What a cute color. It's almost like, it's almost silver. Very cute. I love that. I think this looks incredible. I think this was so easy to do. I mean, of course, I'm used to working with colorful eyeshadows, but there are definitely some tricky colorful eyeshadow formulas out there that definitely cost way more than this situation right here. So I would definitely say you don't need to buy expensive eyeshadows. There are so many good color combos from ColourPop. And even though I will say not all palettes are created equal, if there are a palette that you're interested in, just check up some reviews on YouTube. There's always someone letting you know if this is like a great palette or just an okay palette because they do be having quite a few great palettes. And this one, the Blue Velvet, according to me, if you wanna try blue eyeshadows, this is such a great way to start. Did you really think that I was gonna let the opportunity to talk about prans once more just slip by? No. Prance by Colourpop is my favorite eyeliner ever and it's been for years, like probably five or six years. It is a pastel blue that is matte. There's no shimmer and on me, this one goes on beautifully and it just lasts for hours and hours and hours and I love how it looks. I love how it wears. I love how it goes on. I love how brightening it is by still being colorful. They did just recently repackage and reformulate this one, and I honestly think it's even better now. So this one, I cannot recommend this one enough. If you're looking for something that's not too dark, not too smoky, not too overpowering, something that would actually even go with like an all brown look, definitely look into Prance. It's that perfect pastel pop to honestly any look. I cannot recommend it enough. I'm gonna put on some lashes. I've actually only used these lashes once, so judge me a little bit, but I was so impressed when I used these Juvia's Place lashes. This is in Nubian Lash Kush. I think they're called Kush. I did cut mine a bit to make them into a half lash, and I am so impressed with how they went on, how they looked, how they wore, how the lash band is thin, but still flexible, but at the same time feels a little sturdy. It does not feel like it's gonna break apart immediately. And it just looks super beautiful on. I feel like these are stunning and I kinda wanna look into what other ones they have. I will say that this one that's called Kush, they're very light on the outer end, like the inner end, the part that I cut off. And I just kept this like fluffy outer part because I like a half lash. But yeah, I'm very impressed with how these ones uh, were on. So we're gonna put these on and we're gonna be using, where do I have it? Here. This has been my favorite lash glue for years and this is from Duo. I have tried so many lash glues. I use the Duo Green. It's important that it's the green for me because I have a sensitivity towards latex. So if I use the one that's blue that has latex in it, my eyes will start tearing up. I will become red around my eyes. So I need the green one that's latex free. It's a very easy to use little uh, brush to brush it on. These have the perfect hold. If you leave them to like, almost for like three, four minutes until the lash glue changes color into like a almost blue iridescent see-through instead of the white. Super easy to put on and it stays on for the entirety of the day. But at the same time, when you take these off, they're not on so hard that you end up ripping half your eye off, which is something that I appreciate. So they have the perfect amount of hold, super affordable. I literally buy two each <laughs> at Ulta when I make my orders because I go through these like water, but I think they're so, so good. I don't go them through them that often, but I wear lashes every time I do my makeup. So I will say that I probably go through them more often than most people. But if you were looking to try lashes, don't think that you need to buy an expensive lash glue. Buy the Green Duo one, it is absolutely amazing. Okay, let me put these lashes on. I'm just gonna 
paint a little bit on the strip here and that's gonna be that's gonna be it I mean I love a blue eye look more than I love any other eyeshadow like combinations or colors it's my absolute favorite I always feel the prettiest the fiercest the, the funnest the most fun or the funnest not 100% sure what is grammatically correct it could be neither let's be honest but these are my recommendations of like just really good affordable makeup also of course with a colorful twist because that's my favorite thing to be wearing just stuff that's like not good for the price not like oh i don't want to buy high-end makeup i'm stuck with this no this is great makeup that just happens to be costing less hope this was helpful and please let me know if you would like to see part two i'm definitely open for that i have so many more suggestions to let you know about i feel like my channel for a really long time was mostly about either indie or high-end but I really have been diving into more affordable options and if you have anything that you think is like wow this is one of my favorite products and just happens to be drugstore let us know down in the comments I might be shopping some of your suggestions I'm known to do that for before I would love to hear your suggestions down below also don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you again really soon again in a new video bye